Good morning. Today is the 23rd day of August in this 2024th year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have uh, an overcast day today. Uh, I, it looks like it could rain. I haven't looked at the forecast today, but the temperatures are certainly nice enough. A little breeze going, so as Vanita's still uh, sleeping, I'm going to let her, let her stay in there and rest, uh, as she seems to be pretty comfortable. Uh, got up during the night and moved around on her own, which was great. Uh, almost got herself back in bed by herself. Gave a little bit of help, but uh, she's doing real good. So we'll let her rest and uh, get some yard work done and on from there. Hope you're looking forward to a good weekend. Believe it or not, college football begins at noon with uh, Florida State against Georgia Tech. They're playing in Dublin, Ireland. So uh, the NCAA football has gone international again. Uh, enjoy your weekend and uh, God's blessings. A reading from the eighth chapter of Hebrews. Now the main point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister in the sanctuary and the true tent that the Lord, and not any mortal, has set up. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Hence it is necessary for this priest also to have something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They offer worship in a sanctuary that is a sketch and shadow of the heavenly one. For Moses, when he was about to erect the tent, was warned, See that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you in on the mountain. But Jesus has now obtained a more excellent ministry. And to that degree, he is the mentor of a better covenant, which has been enacted through better promises. For if that first covenant has had been faultless, there would have been no need to look for a second one. God finds fault with them when he says, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their ancestors on the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. For they did not continue in my covenant, and so I had no concern for them, says the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people, and they shall not teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and will remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Of course, those words, the last were quotes from uh, the prophet Jeremiah, and uh, as he spoke to a people who were in captivity as to uh, how their relationship would continue in the future. And that future relationship was through the covenant that Christ made with the peoples of God's creation. And that was to bring salvation through his sacrifice, not through theirs. The sacrifice we offer is a true, humble, and contrite heart, says the Lord our God. And so Jesus has given to us a way in which we are to approach life, to live out our life in relationships one with another. And that is through humble service to God, and in terms, if to God, to each other. And that is a service of love and care, of concern and kindness and peace and hope and forgiveness 
and possibilities unended. I'd like to share a brief reading, and this is from the uh, Spirituality for Ministry by Urban T. Holmes III. To be a spiritual friend, one must have detachment, discretion, and discernment with all that prepares for these gifts. Spiritual companionship is a gentle art, demanding a willingness to listen as if one had a third ear attuned to the inner self. It is neither psychotherapy nor is it the sacrament of reconciliation. Sometimes one needs to confront, but far more often the best intervention of the spiritual guide is in parabolic language, nudging the friend into a new way of seeing. The journey belongs to the other, and that person's uniqueness must always be honored. The friend of the soul is an instrumental image. Such a person is not to be a buddy, but someone who listens, comforts, and supports. He or she serves as a hermeneut, which means that he or she is a means, not an end. It is important for me not to think too highly of myself in this relationship but to stand in awe of what God is doing in the life of the other person. Often this requires me to get out of the way. When in ignorance I have nothing to say, I must remain silent. Those are incredible words, those last words as to how to sometimes stake a relationship, and that is to be in that ear, that all listening ear, that allows the other person's journey to be channeled, to be affirmed, or to be denied, to be of support and encouragement, to solicit the help that a person knows exists that lies within. Sometimes we do think we know it all, and I know I'm at big fault on that, um, and have all the wisdom and advice that's needful. But in terms in offering that, we often neglect the reality that the other person may see their own way through and that we are but channels to help foster that inner conversation they may have with themselves and with their God to seek those solutions in those ways. So be an open friend, one who can care and share their concern, but to be present in the moment with those who have sought you out and let us pray. Heavenly Father, you give to us your guiding hand to show us a more perfect way through this life. And that hand has taken the form of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who indeed was compassionate and understanding, <clears throat> who knew the human condition in a very real way. And so has communicated that to you you know the fullness of what we endure in this life. Be present for us and with us and help us to do the same for those that we cross paths with during the day. Grant us your help and your hope. Hope for this better day is that may lie ahead for our world. We ask your loving kindness to be with all who struggle in many and varied ways. Help them to see a way through to a better day. We pray as well for the peoples of Gaza who have suffered greatly in this war between Hamas and Israel. Might terrorism end, might peace find us secure borders for all involved. We pray for the peoples of Ukraine that continue to endure yet year after year the aggression of the Russian nation. And we pray a sense of peace might prevail sooner than later. We ask your loving kindness to touch the lives of those for whom we intercede. For our mother Charlotte, for Vanita, for Ben, 
They pray for Donna, for Tom and Nikki, Elaine and Miriam, James and Evelyn, for Evelyn Tompkins, for Mark and Katie, for Laura, for Jenny and Linda and Barry, for Kenneth and Gay, and for each that we commend to your loving kindness in this moment of silence. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, giving you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore. Amen.